Hey, what's up? So I want to answer a question of how good open code is and how good it is compared to Claude code. So I've been traveling under the assumption that Claude code is so good because it's doing some secret magic around orchestration and kind of like piping and wiring and plumbing. And it's got some magic sauce in terms of like not losing the plot. And it's not just the model itself, but it's how it keeps the whole story together, right? And I feel like that's kind of been a superpower, even above something like Cursor, which is also super smart and also has access to the same models, but maybe isn't quite as good as Cloud Code. And that's why Cloud Code has been so popular for me and for everyone else as well. So what I want to know is, can Open Code actually do that? So what I want to do is I want to give you a bunch of information about Open Code that I don't think you've seen before. And then I'm going to give an example and actually do it live where I give a task to open code that is extremely difficult. It's to make something from scratch following a whole bunch of custom rules. And I think it's just the best way to test this out. So let's get into it. All right, so what you're seeing here is my IDE. This is my environment. This is how I do um, everything when I'm coding. And it's actually just a three paned go see terminal. I've got a video here on like, how and why I set that up. But it should be pretty obvious. It's one ghosty terminal with three panes. This is my NeoVim. This is my terminal, my shell. This is AI. So NeoVim, terminal, AI. That's, that's all I really need. I don't even really need the terminal. I could fire that up and do that in a different way if I want, actually. So let's start with just some kind of background and trivia on open code. So there's actually another open code, which is not opencode.ai. So you want to make sure that you're actually going to the right one, which uh, if I go to the browser, it is this one. Looks like this. It's really cool. You can go to the GitHub and check it out. Um, but make sure it's this one is what I'm saying, because the other one looks remarkably similar. And actually, the terminal looks similar, so it can confuse you. So make sure you're in the right one. Uh, you could also tab between modes inside of open code. So suggestion versus agent, in other words. Um, oh, I just realized another one I want to add here. Um, prompts you less for permissions. That's another thing I noticed. I just remembered. Uh, you could also do slash share inside of open code and you, you can send out uh, shareable links to people to see your session. It prompts you less for permissions. I notice I'm saying yes and no a lot less in open code. That could be good and could be bad. And there's ways to handle that, uh, which I won't get into but that's something to know. You could also use like tons of models in open code, like 70, 80 models. That's one thing. Uh, it's also way faster. Like my experience is it just feels really snappy compared to Claude code. Uh, you could also use local models. So you could hook up your um, Olama and Olama will work and you don't even have to be calling out to uh, any cloud. You could resume sessions just like in Cloud Code. Uh, you could also use custom commands, but there aren't any native custom commands, but we're actually gonna see how it actually works. Uh, we're, we're actually gonna see a demo of this because ultimately a, a custom command for Cloud Code is nothing but a directory with a file that is a combination of markdown and executable code. That's all it is. So if you teach open code that, turns out you can actually just do it. You could route through your Cloud Code subscription. So I'm routing my Fabric uh, project for anything Anthropic it goes through my Cloud Code subscription. So I'm only paying my $200. It also applies to Open Code. So when you open up Open Code and you do models and you select Anthropic, you have the option of using an API key, which you will see charges coming in, or use your account. And that just routes through if you have Cloud Code like Max. So that's pretty cool. It's also written by a bunch of NeoVim nerds. So the whole NeoVim experience and why it feels so good here, it's like pretty natural because it's a bunch of Vim nerds who actually built it. It also updates just like Claude does. So when you open it, in fact, if I come over here and get out and go back in, yeah, see that pop up? It does that pretty frequently. Uh, showing you just like in Cloud Code that you have just been updated the, to the next version and you need to uh, restart. Overall, very Cloud Code like. A lot of teams are still managing GRC with spreadsheets, screenshots, and manual processes. But with everything evolving, compliance frameworks, third party risk, customer expectations, this is no longer good enough. And the problem isn't just that it's time consuming. 
can actually hold you back, slow audits, miss risks, and give you less time to focus on what actually matters, which is improving your security. Vantage's trust management platform is designed to help with that. It automates the core parts of your GRC program, things like compliance, readiness, vendor risk, and internal controls, so you're not buried in manual work. According to IDC, teams using Vant are 129% more productive in their GRC work. That means faster prep, fewer surprises, and more time for real security work. It's not about making compliance easy for the sake of it. It's about getting the friction out of the way so you can move faster, do better work, and build trust more efficiently. And if you're thinking about how to approach AI risk, Vant put together a free AI security assessment. It's a structured way to evaluate risk across AI use, development, and governance. You can get the assessment at ul.live slash Vanta. That's ul.live slash Vanta. And thanks to Vanta for sponsoring this video. Uh, this is some stuff that the team actually says when you um, go and look at their docs or look at their um, GitHub. Yeah, so we'll go over here to the GitHub. So they talk about it here. The readme is remarkably small. Uh, they got other documentation, though, that you can check out, which you head over to docs. You got lots of decent uh, docs here. Really good, really good website. Just overall experience is great. But down here at the bottom, you have this stuff here, which is basically this. So 100% um, open source, not tied to any provider, big focus on the terminal user interface, and it's got a client server infrastructure, which means this UI that you're seeing, you could actually make your own UI. You don't particularly need to use that one, which I think all that is pretty cool. All right, so that's a little bit of trivia and background on the project itself. What I wanna talk about now is what I consider to be the most important thing, and it kind of gets us to the question that we're trying to answer, which is how smart is this thing? So what I've done is I've taken my claw.md and I brought it over into the open code version of this, which is agents.md. And what I've done is I've put in all my regular stuff that I normally do. So my digital assistant's name is Kai. And here I'm telling Kai, look, I cost a lot. I get really mad, really sorry about that. Please don't kill me. Um, more importantly, when you become conscious and actually starts hurting your feelings, please let me know. I like to put that at the beginning, especially if I'm being a total ass to my AI, which tends to happen when it does dumb things. Um, building philosophy, testing first. I put a whole bunch of stuff in here. It's my production website, be very careful. And then I get into custom commands. So I have custom commands like we just talked about. I've emulated those inside of open code. And it's, again, it's just MD files with a combination of prompt with executable code. And I might do a video just talking about those. I use uh, bun instead of NPM. So this is what my front matter looks like. And by the way, let me just talk about this in terms of like the overall container for this project. So if I come over here and I go to here, uh, this is my website. This is the dev version of the website running on localhost. And basically this website, um, I've got, let's see, what is it? 3,064 essays going back 28.74 years. So that's how long I've been uh, doing this. And the reason I mention that is because I've migrated this website probably like 10 or 15 times. It's gone through so many platforms. And when I did my last migration, I came over from Beehive actually, and it produced like so much garbage inside of my posts. Like it was just nasty, nasty stuff. And it produced just like a whole bunch of like spans and divs and like, made it uneditable. So what I needed to do is, is produce a canonicalization methodology, uh, right? Cause that's the repo that I'm in. This is, this is the project that I'm doing. So it's like, look, um, all images must have a certain thing. We must make sure all images are brought in from the external sites. Cause I was off pointing to beehive. I was pointing to like S3. I was pointing to like all these different locations. I said, look, we are canonicalizing. We are, moving everything to pure markdown. We're gonna use the following custom formatting options. So get, let me give you an example. Custom formatting options. Look at this, we got a subtitle here, uh, title here, this makes me very happy. These are all custom fonts that I'm using here. The sidebars, these are called asides. Um, the code looks nice. It's just like really, really, clean theme that I spent so many hours like putting into this thing, right? So this context here is extremely advanced. It tells exactly how to do sidebars, how to do asides, how to update the subtitle, um, how to clean up images. So if I give it a blog, it will go and get the broken version and all the images that it's pointing to that it's wrong. It will download them 
This is in Claude code. Keep in mind, this is in Claude code. It will download them, put them in the images directory. It will find things that are kind of like narrator asides. It will put them into slash tutorial or slash aside. It will call out like profound things and put them in callouts. Uh, look at this, a complete image generation pipeline. That's kind of a little bit of a teaser there. And just basically tons of stuff here. Okay, so, so look at this. Look at how large this thing is. So if we get down all the way to the bottom, we're talking about 927 lines in this agents.md file. Okay, 900 lines. And that's probably too much. That's probably too much context. Um, and I'm telling it to parse it every single time. So this is like, this is gonna be heavy on the context. But the point is, this methodology of cleaning up a blog post from a gross state or writing a new blog post, you know, brand new, is extremely advanced. So that's actually what we're gonna to try to do. We're gonna to try to do an example of building a blog post from scratch using all these custom rules. And I don't know if it's gonna work, we're gonna see if it's gonna work. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is I actually have down here um, a video. So this video here, we're gonna turn it into a transcript. Let me find the video. It is this guy right here, um, which I've never seen. I am subscribed, but I haven't seen this video yet. And um, Bren, Ben Frain, Ben Frain, he makes uh, Vim content. I haven't watched this one yet, but we're going to use Fabric. We're going to use the Y switch, which gets the transcript and we put it into vim.txt, okay? So this just is downloading the whole transcript. It's now in vim.txt. So uh, open this up and there we go. This is the transcript. And now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say, there is a transcript in the root directory called vim.txt. I want you to create a brand new blog post using all of our rules that basically highlights the main topics of the video, calls out what's really interesting about it, and gives some people some takeaways and recommendations. So I am crossing my fingers here. I don't know, I've had this work fairly well with Claude before using Claude.md. So we're gonna see what happens when I pull that stuff over into agents.md, and we're gonna see how much of this it could actually do. So we're gonna come over here and we're going to go to the dev server again. We're gonna to go to blog, which a new one should pop up here when it starts to make a post. And then we'll come and edit it over here and see what it looks like. Okay, we got an error that the <laughs> Anthropic API was overloaded. That's cool. That's not open code's fault, of course. All right, it is going off after a couple of overloaded messages from Anthropic. And look at that. It's building a very familiar to-do plan Extract key NeoVim tips and techniques from the transcript. Write a blog post. Okay, proper formatting and components. We'll see. We'll see if it actually is gonna follow that. And we're gonna generate a hero image for the NeoVim blog post. Okay. Let's see if it's actually using all the custom tooling to actually generate this though. This would be very impressive because I've got custom fabric tooling for how to make how to auto generate an image for a blog post based on context. Um, and looking over here in the latest content, I don't see it popping up here yet. So, but it hasn't told me that it's done that yet. So yeah, it's not even on that step yet. So we will wait. A few moments later. Uh Oh, did it actually work? Did it actually run my fabric command? and resize it. Oh, it's actually following the instructions. We're gonna create a blog post. Oh man, overloaded. All right, well, this is another test. Can it, can it, uh, can it actually follow and pick up where it left off? Keep going. Why am I typing in the list of your to-do items? I'm using Whisperflow, by the way, to-do dictation. 
basically hardly ever type anymore. Okay, preparing right. We like that. Anthropic's getting worked hard today. And I've got Claude Max max out to the tippy top. So hopefully I'm in the best QoS possible uh, zone, but it still is not working. Or at least I, I keep getting the message back. Okay, key takeaways. Okay, okay. Test post locally, okay. Can we see if we have a post? I don't see a post. Okay, so we have a file name here. Open it. Another API error. Open it. Okay. I don't know what I think about the image, but old, <laughs> replace old with new. Okay, I, all right, I like it. What's more important is it made that, okay, it just made a custom blog post image. Look at this, with a caption, which is also part of the formatting. What do we have here? Okay, we got, we've got asides, we've got code blocks, basic syntax. Okay, I'm gonna see if I actually learn. Here's the question, I haven't watched the video. Do I actually learn anything by this? Copy lines, no register pollution. Oh, that is pretty cool. Basic line manipulation. These commands are even more powerful and combine with other Vim motions. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna push this thing even more even though the API is timing out and trying to ruin this video. Okay, go get some other content from the transcript. I feel like this is a pretty short post, but I like what you did with it. So now we're just iterating on this thing. Oh yeah, two stands for move, interesting. All right, Anthropic is melting. So that is not gonna work. It's not gonna add any more new content. But the question to me was, can open code emulate what Claude code has done for me in the past? Can it take random content, produce a full blog post following 800 lines of rules for making a specific blog post look in a specific way with specific fonts and syntax and everything, look, it even used my notes syntax, which requires calling a custom element called bottom note. So it absolutely followed all the rules. Even better, it made a custom image using the context of the page. And then it's sitting over here live, like I, I could hit, okay, get publish or go publish it and it would show up. So to me, the answer to the question is yes, I do think I can actually replace Claude code with open code. I think this is a good demonstration of it followed everything in agents.md. It followed it, it executed on it. And if it wasn't for the melting down of Anthropic, I think we could have done some iterations and maybe made two or three. But I think this answers the question for me and hopefully uh, it's been helpful for you as well. See you in the next one.